What if, what if the person that you love most or someone very dear to you tomorrow was diagnosed with a serious disease or ended up paralyzed in a wheelchair? Um, I actually have experienced this firsthand. My grandfather was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's. Um, both are horrible diseases. I watched both of them ravage his body and his mind until he actually ended up in a wheelchair and had to be more or less strapped to support him up in the wheelchair. He had no control. Um, and then eventually I watched him pass away. But there is hope for these things. And that hope is embryonic stem cell research. Um, according to the Alliance of Stem Cell Research, cures for over 70 serious diseases and injuries can become possible with the use of embryonic stem cells. This miraculous scientific breakthrough could cure and or make millions of people healthier and live longer lives. This evening I'm going to be talking to you about embryo stem cell research. I'll be talking to you about where these come from, um, the potential for the research, um, the unique characteristic of this particular line of stem cell. Um, th there's quite a bit of controversy involved in the embryonic stem cell research, so I will try to cover that the best I can. Talk a little bit about um, some celebrity advocates and the ongoing debate. Uh, first of all, you need to know what, what is a stem cell, okay? Stem cells are master cells in the body, and these are the cells from which other cells with specialized functions are created. In particular, the embryonic stem cells. Now these come from an embryo, and the definition of an embryo is a group of cells from where a woman's egg is fertilized with a man's sperm. That is the definition of embryo. And these embryos are four to five days old, and they're called blastocyst. And this is where the actual embryo stem cells come from. They were first isolated in 1998. So this research has only been ongoing for about 10 years. Um, this research at the moment is not federally funded. Um, President Bush actually used his veto power to stop that. It's not against the law. It just, um, the people who are doing the research have to fund this all privately themselves. Um, as I said, this embryo is actually called a blastocyst. Uh, there are three structures that are involved. There's the trophoblast, which is a layer of cells that surrounds the blastocyst. <clears throat> the blastocole, which is the hollow cavity inside the blastocyst. And there's this inner cell mass, and this is actually where the embryonic stem cells come from. And there's about 30 cells in there, and they are located at the end of the blastocole. Now, I say there are 30. When we put these in the Petri dish, in six months' time, there are the possibilities of this 30 turning into millions. The thing with stem cell research is, you know, you can't just have 100 or 1,000. For every therapeutic visit, there are millions of stem cells that need to be injected. <clears throat> this is just uh, to show you the embryo development. Day one, uh, which is the two pronuclear. Day three, there are six to eight cells. Day five, it's the blastocyst. And this is the point where the stem cells are retrieved. Um, here again, we have the embryo, which we show the egg. This is where it divides. Um, and it takes its sphere shape. And in five to seven days, you can actually see the embryonic stem cells. And these embryonic stem cells are so unique because they are capable of being turned into every one of the 220 cells that we have in our body, except for sperm and an egg. Um, these then are stem cells. When they, re when they re bleh, retract it, it's called the stem line. Okay, they're removed, and they can be put into petri dishes, and they can be coaxed to grow into whatever 
um, the scientist chooses to. Um, muscle cells that could place a, a damaged heart, um, they have grown these and these cells will actually beat and can be injected into the heart. Uh, the potential uses for embryonic stem cells um, to increase the understanding of how diseases occur. There are so many diseases that we don't even know what, why, why they are caused, why they happen. Um, they're used to generate healthy cells to replace the disease cells, which therefore would be our cures. Um, they could be used to test new drugs for safety and effectiveness, and they could also help to prevent birth defects. Um, some of the diseases that could possibly be cured with the embryonic stem cell, um, all of these numbers are only pertaining to the United States, um, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, diabetes, Parkinson's, heart disease, Lou Gehrig's, spinal cord injuries. As you can see, those numbers add up, and there are millions of people in this world that are suffering. Um, the embryos that are used for the research are obtained from fertility clinics. Okay? They are not made specifically for the research. These are all embryos that are in vitro fertilization. They're all frozen, by the way. Every time a patient goes to a fertility clinic, there are eight to 12 embryos that are ready because you know, with in vitro, a lot of people don't have luck the first time. So let's say the, the third try, you know, hey, we've hit it. So they have nine embryos that are left. Those embryos are frozen, and they are frozen at 320 degrees minus zero <clears throat> and the embryos that they don't use get thrown away. Um, President Obama um, has said that he announced on December 2nd he is going to lift the ban on federal funding for embryonic stem cell research. Um, one of his main concerns is that we are going to fall behind. There are so many other countries that are far more advanced than we are, and we all know that we could, we could use the surplus. Um, some of the celebrity advocates for stem cell research, this is Christopher Reeve. Um, he suffered a spinal cord injury that left him paralyzed from the neck down. He actually died from cardiac arrest, which was caused from a systemic infection that was caused from his injury. Michael J. Fox, at the age of 30, was diagnosed with Parkinson's. If you don't know what Parkinson's is, it's kind of like a shaking palsy. It's someone who tremors and shakes. Um, Ronald Reagan was our 40th president. Uh, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, and he died of pneumonia, which was a complication. Kind of what's ironic about, about this is in 1988, um, he actually put a ban on the stem cell research. And then um, six years later, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Needless to say, Nancy Reagan is now an advocate for stem cell research. Uh, Mary Tyler Moore, she's had diabetes for 30 years. Uh, the controversy. The controversy that involves embryonic stem cell research is that extracting the stem cells actually destroys the embryo. It can be used no longer. There is a surplus of embryos, okay? There are 400,000 embryos that are stored at fertility clinics across the United States. Um, these embryos, what will be done with them is that they will be just frozen indefinitely. Um, there are a few people that choose to put their embryos up for adoption, and this is all according to Dr. Richard Scott. He's a, a runs a fertility clinic in New Jersey. And according to him, there are thousands of embryos that are destroyed each year. So I leave you with the final thought. Should we discard all these frozen embryos and let them be no use at all? Or should we put these embryos to use that can help millions and millions of people?